If you want to become wealthy or financially free, the first thing you got to do is right now, you need to start investing a minimum of 15% of every dollar that you earn. What's up everybody? I am Jaspreet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. If I told you that I am budgeting my money right now, that way I can live off of $7,000 a year, you're probably going to think that I'm never going to eat guacamole again or I'm going to live in a box or I'm gonna move to a third world country. But here's the thing, about 50 years ago, if you were living off of $7,000 a year, you'd be living pretty decent. I mean, $7,000 a year 50 years ago is like $50,000 a year today. This is where people think about building wealth and retirement and financial freedom all wrong because people always talk about, okay, when I become financially free, my goal is to be able to live off of $50,000 a year. But your $50,000 a year that you're thinking of is today's money. $50,000 a year today is very different than $50,000 a year 50 years from now. Just like how $7,000 a year today is very different than what $7,000 a year was back 50 years ago. So when we're talking about building wealth and investing your money for retirement or this financial freedom or whatever you want to call it, you got to understand two things. One, you got to understand how your money works, that way you're using the money right way. And the second, you got to know how to invest this 15% and why you need to be investing this 15%. But before I get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below because the way the YouTube algorithm works, if you do not smash that thumbs up button, then YouTube is much less likely to show you and other people our financial news and education videos. When the majority of people think of money, they relate it to stuff. How much stuff can my money buy me? If I make $1,000, what is this $1,000 worth? If you ask the majority of people, you relate $1,000 to how many nights can I go out? How many vacations can I go on? How many nice clothes can I buy? How many times can I buy extra guac? So the majority of people, when you think about money, is what stuff can I buy? The reason we call ourselves the minority mindset is because we think differently than the majority of people. When I want you to think about money, I want you to think about money in terms of how many assets can you buy. An asset is something that makes you money. And so now when you have $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000, I want you to ask yourself, okay, now that I have this cash, how many assets, investments can I buy, which are things that are gonna make you more money? When I was younger and I made money, the question that I had was how can I use this money to improve my car? I started by tinting my windows and I got new rims and I got subwoofers put in, then I got all this other stuff put in. And it was always this kind of like balance of, okay, I made $1,000, what can I do to my car? Ooh, I made $2,000, how can I upgrade my car? So anytime I made money before, it was how can I spend this money in a way that's gonna better my car or whatever I have. This completely changed when I started investing in real estate because after I bought my first real estate investment property, it was making me something like $250 a month in profit every single month. And once I got it up and running and going, it was $250 a month passively, which means I wasn't doing any work. Every month, $250 was being deposited into my account. Now, all of a sudden, the way I thought about money completely changed because now I'm thinking in terms of houses and real estate instead of cars. Because now in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if I can make $250 a month from one property, that means from two properties, I can make $500 a month. With 10 properties, I can make $2,500 a month. With 100 properties, I can make $25,000 a month every single month passively without me having to do any work. As you grow, you'll start to realize that there's easier ways to do this. Like you might not have to buy a hundred single family homes. Maybe you can buy an apartment complex and some properties are going to pay you more per unit than others. But in general, that mindset is true. Now I'm thinking about assets instead of liabilities. I'm thinking, okay, when I make money, what investments can I buy? What assets can I buy? How can I use my money to make myself wealthier? How can I use my money to build more assets? How can I use my money to create more value? instead of just using my money to spend on nice things. You wanna have your nice things, I understand that. But when you make money, I want you to think about it in terms of assets instead of liabilities first. Once you start changing the way you look at money, it is gonna be so much easier for you to start investing your money and put more money aside to investing because before, putting this money aside was a chore because now you are sacrificing a nicer car, you are sacrificing another vacation, you are sacrificing all these nice things, but now you're not making that sacrifice. Now you're working more towards your goals of buying more assets because that's the way you're looking at money. Now you look at money as a tool to buy you more assets, which allow you to have nicer things. But now when you change the way you look at it, it's easier for you to make more of these sacrifices to buy more assets. That way you can have more freedom, have more wealth, and then ultimately have more of the nice things, the nicer cars, the nicer vacations. Now let's get into the numbers because if you're subscribed to our channel, chances are you've heard me talk about our 75 15 10 plan, which says for every dollar that you earn, 15 cents is the minimum you should be investing 
10 cents is the minimum you should be saving and 75 cents is the maximum you should be spending. Now, I'm gonna go over the 15% investing. Why 15% and what the numbers actually look like when it comes to building your wealth. Here's the thing, investing is the real secret to building wealth for regular people. It is not building the next Amazon. It is not finding the next hot stock before it pops. It is not winning the lottery. It's not having a job that pays you a million dollars a year. Yes, these things can help, but they are the exception to the rule. They are not the rule. So if you really want to build wealth, the secret, secret is investing your money. And the issue here is so many people are not doing this, even though I think we should know this by now. It's hard. Because on one hand, we're never taught about money. Like we don't go to school learning about how money works, how budgeting works, how investing works, how to build wealth. And on the second side, we just don't really have kind of a, a good financial culture when it comes to spending because we live in this debt culture where it is completely normal to finance your wardrobe. And so this is kind of the culture that we live in. And the only kind of financial education that people get nowadays is you go to your job, and then your job gives you this packet which says, here's your 401k information. That's why right now, half of America is not investing any money, not a single penny at all. And on top of that, the people that are investing, most of them are only investing their money in their 401k, even though your 401k was never intended to be your sole retirement or investment plan. So if we kind of diagram this out, if this pie represents America, that's a very lopsided pie. If this pie represents America, only half of these people, so these people are not investing any money. Only half of these people are investing any money at all. Now, out of these people that are investing any money, the majority of these people, so something like this, are investing their money only in their 401k. This is the only people that are investing their money in their 401k and out of their 401k. These are the only people that are creating their own wealth and retirement outside of what's kind of just given to you. Out of these people that are only investing their money in their 401k, which was never intended to be your sole retirement or wealth building or investment tool, out of these people, the average 401k contribution is just 7% of your income. So you have a huge chunk of Americans that are not investing any money. And then you have this big chunk of people that are investing their money, but they're only investing their money in their 401k. And the average contribution is just 7%, which means you have only a few percentage of Americans that are investing more than 7% of their income every single year towards their wealth, towards their retirement, towards their financial freedom. If you really want to become wealthy, you got to invest more than 7% of what you're making. Now, let me show you why investing a minimum of 15% of your income is so important. Let's assume that now when you're 21 years old, you go out and you get a job paying you just $30,000 a year. So you are making $30,000 a year and let's assume that you're investing 15% of your income every single year before taxes. So that means you are investing right around $4,500. So I'm also going to assume that you're working a job where your salary is going to grow over time. And let's assume that your salary just grows by an average of 3% a year. Now I know over time, hopefully your salary will grow by more than this, but let's assume just 3% a year because sometimes you're gonna get a raise, sometimes you're gonna go to a new job, maybe you'll get another bump there, maybe you get a promotion, but every single year you get a 3% annual bump and as you continue to make more money you continue to invest just 15% of your income. If you do that between the age of 21 and 65 you are going to save so at 65 you continue to do this you are going to put aside $400,000 over these 44 years. Now, if you just save this cash and you started living off of, let's say, $30,000 a year, then this $400,000 would last you about 13 years. After 13 years, this $400,000 would go away, but you also gotta remember that this is $400,000 about 44 years from now. This $30,000 a year in 44 years it's not gonna have the same value as $30,000 today. I mean, by the time you're 65, if you continue to grow your income by 3% a year, you're gonna be making more than $100,000 a year. So if you wanna continue maintaining your lifestyle at 65, that means you gotta pull out $100,000 a year here, so your money's only gonna last you four years. By the time you're 70, you're gonna be broke. So this saving model doesn't work, which is why I want you to invest this 15% a year. If you invested this 15% a year and this $400,000 went into your investments and you got a below average return for the course of your life and you only got a 4% annual return on your money, 
If you were able to get a 4% average return on your money over your lifetime, then this $400,000 will grow to right around $900,000. Quite a bit more, but you gotta remember, this is still quite a bit below average. If you got an average return of 7% a year, then this $400,000 you invested over your time would grow to $1.9 million on the side for you to now use however you want. And if you could grow your money by 10% a year, which is just a little bit above average, especially when you account for inflation, then your money would not grow to $1.9 million, it will grow to $4 point eight million dollars but the only way this is going to happen is if you're investing 15 percent of your income every single year now look this is where you got to really understand money because so many people make this mistake that when they're planning for wealth or retirement or financial freedom they're thinking in today's dollars they're thinking okay i'm young today i'm hoping that i can live off of thirty thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year or a hundred thousand dollars a year because they're relating that to today's money but thirty thousand dollars a year today is not going to be the same as thirty thousand dollars a year 45 years from now that's why your income is hopefully going to be adjusted with inflation and go up by a couple percent or a few percent a year if you are 21 today and you're making thirty thousand dollars a year by the time you're 65 if your income grows by three percent a year you're going to be making something like $106,000 a year by the time you're 65. So if we assume that $106,000 is what it takes for you to keep the same lifestyle as 65 as you do in 21, that means you got to be pulling out $100,000 a year when it comes time for you to retire in order to keep the same lifestyle that you have today. Now, depending on how much money you're making, that might seem like a whole lot of money or not enough money. But what you got to understand is that in 45 years, $100,000 a year is not going to be as much as $100,000 a year year today. So you got to kind of plan for that with your money. And so if we're looking at this kind of income and you're thinking, all right, if I want to maintain my lifestyle, I got to be pulling out $100,000 a year. If you have $400,000 sitting there, that's not going to cut it. You're not going to have a very nice retirement or financial freedom because after a few years, you're broke. Now here, if you get the 4% a year, now at least you have some more money. And what you got to also understand is because this money is invested, you're hopefully going to continue growing it after you start pulling money out too, because you're not going to pull out all $900,000 at once, at least hopefully not. You're going to pull out $100,000, let the other money grow, pull out another $100,000, let the other money grow, and kind of go on like that. That way this can last you more than nine years. And here, assuming you can just get an average return, now you really have money put aside for the rest of your life because now you got money for at least the next 20 years. Because even if you're pulling out $100,000 at a time, that means you have your money growing for another 18 years after you pull this money out. So you pull out $100,000, your money continues to grow the next year because you only pulled out $100,000, you still got $1.8 in there. Then the next year you pull out another $100,000, you have $1.7 million growing for you. So as long as you got money in the account, your money will continue to hopefully grow. I want you to be an aggressive investor. Actually, I need you to be an aggressive investor because social security is becoming a thing of the past and pensions are becoming history. And so if you want to be able to take care of yourself and take care of your wealth and take care of your family and your finances, you got to be the one to put it in place and you got to be the one to start taking action because you cannot rely on the government to take care of you because the government national debt is skyrocketing. They have their own problems. It is very hard and very painful to rely on somebody else, especially the government to take care of you, which is why I want you to be an aggressive investor. That way you can take care of yourself and take care of your wealth. That way you can live your life the way you want, not worrying about what the government is going to give you. Now, there are different ways that you can invest your money. That way you don't have to actually sell your assets in order to have have money in your hand like if you invest in rental properties investment real estate now you're creating passive income cash flow that way you can get cash in your hand every single month without you having to actually sell a property and if you're investing in dividend paying stocks now you're making money every quarter or every year from your stocks and you don't have to actually sell your stocks to get paid but i'll get to that in just a second now here's the thing most people don't start investing their money as soon as it turned 21. what you need to understand is the older you are the more aggressively that you need to invest just because you're old and have a start idea doesn't mean that you can't start it just means you got to be a little bit more aggressive there's in general two different ways that you can invest your money you have one way of investing your money which is through retirement accounts this is through things like a 401k or an ira and then the second way that you can invest your money is through non-retirement accounts this is through creating your own stock brokerage account and investing your money in stocks or through investing your money in physical real estate not through a retirement account and so this is money you're not doing in a retirement account versus retirement accounts they can give you some tax benefits 
benefits. The whole purpose of a retirement account is literally to help fund your retirement because when you invest your money in these accounts, you can kind of get a tax deferral right now and then your money can grow tax free until it comes time for you to retire unless you use a Roth, then you're paying taxes today and then you don't got to worry about taxes when it comes time for you to pull your money out. I'm not going to get into too many details on this, but the whole purpose of this is for you to invest your money that way it can grow tax free, but you cannot touch your money until it comes time for you to retire. If you want to learn more about that, I will link a video where I've already discussed this in the description below. The point that I'm trying to hammer home here is your retirement accounts are typically not enough because your 401k and IRA has limits and you got to make sure now that you're not investing your money based off of what the government limits you at. You got to be investing your money based off of the way you want to live your life in retirement. That's why I say a minimum of 15% of your money needs to go towards your investments. Some of that money can go towards your retirement accounts, but if that's not hitting the 15%, then you got to be investing your money on your own too. That means maybe you got to create your own stock brokerage account, or maybe you got to start investing in your own physical real estate. That way you can get passive income. But here, you got to know what your goal is first. If you want to see your money grow quickly and you don't mind taking on more risk, then you should consider investing your money in the stock market, especially in growth companies and these kind of more startup companies where these companies are trying to grow as quick as possible, as fast as possible. There's more risk involved because startup companies can fail and they might not work out, but you have the opportunity to see your money grow a whole lot quicker because these are companies that are working really hard to grow as big as possible and as fast as possible. If you just want to see slow and steady growth in your money, then you can look at investing your money in more blue chip companies. These blue chip companies are your bigger established companies that have already been there for a long time. They already have their systems and you're just investing your money in this company. That way you can see your money grow slowly. The advantage with this is you have less risk because these companies are already established you already know how they're making money and you can kind of reasonably predict how much money they're going to make and how fast they're going to grow so you have less risk and so you get lower potential returns. One thing that I do want to mention about investing your money in the stock market is that the stock picking game is not for most people because picking stocks requires a lot of work, a lot of research, and a lot of upkeep. If you're not willing to do that, then instead of investing your money in individual companies like trying to find the next Amazon or Google or Facebook, then what you can do is invest in something called a fund like an index fund or an ETF because these funds give you exposure to a whole bunch of different companies and so you have less risk, you can put in less work, but now you're kind of growing with the stock market. I already made a video where I talked about that, so if you want to learn more about how to do that, I will link it for you in the description below. If you're looking for income where now you can create cash flow or passive income coming into your account every month or every year, where now you can have money in your hands without selling your assets, then you want to be investing your money in things like dividend paying stocks because dividend paying stocks typically pay you a check every three months or you can invest your money in real estate because now if you own a house or you own an apartment complex, now every single month the people that are living in your real estate or using your real estate have to pay you rent every single month because they're using your asset. So now when you own these assets like a dividend paying stock or rental properties, now you're making money consistently without you having to physically sell your asset. Real estate is also a really good store for your money because if you have a lot of cash and you want to put it somewhere safe, then real estate is a good place to do it because now you own something physical and tangible that you can see, feel, and touch and that's creating income. Now I know real estate prices don't always go up. You could see a real estate crash, but in general, if you own a property in a good area, then you own something that people need, that something want, and that you can see, feel, and touch. The key for any of this to work though is you got to be consistent and you got to keep investing your money because investing is not a one-time thing. It's not like you can just take $10,000 and throw it in the market or go out and buy one investment property and say, all right, I'm done investing now. It doesn't work like that. You got to keep investing your money consistently if you want to continue to build your wealth. Yes, if you see a market crash, then come and buy as much as you can then because that gives you the opportunity to buy assets for pennies on the dollar. But in general, you got to keep consistently investing if you want to build this wealth because you got to keep putting more and more money towards your investments. Now, for a lot of people, they don't want to be in the game of trying to find the best companies and do the research and find the best time to come in and buy, which is why I say do it every time you get paid. Just create a system. Anytime you get a paycheck, 15% of that should be automatically invested. That way it kind of happens without you having to think about it. And that way you don't accidentally spend this money. There are apps out there that can automate this whole process for you. That way anytime you get paid, a portion of a paycheck will automatically be invested into whatever funds or stocks that you want it to go to. That way your money is constantly just going out without you even seeing it. And that way you're not even tempted to touch your money. If you want to learn more about how to actually do that, our team wrote an amazing article on our website, theminoritymindset.com. And I'll link it for you in the description below. Building wealth 
is really a game where you gotta juggle time and how much money you have to invest. Because the more time that you have on your side, the more your wealth can compound and the bigger your wealth can grow. And the more money you have to invest, the faster that you can grow your wealth. But the tricky thing about this, if we look at it practically, is most of us make more money when we're 50 or 60 than we do when we're 21. And so you kind of get more of your money towards the end of your career, but you have more time in the early part of your career, which is why you got to balance it out. You got to start investing aggressively early. That way you can put more money and have the time on your side. That way you can kind of grow your money and have more money working for you. And as you start to make more money, you continue to keep investing 15% of your income come month after month after month. That way you can continue to compound that wealth and continue to keep growing your money. Again, don't take what I'm saying as the ceiling. I want this to be the floor because right now the average person is investing nothing or very little. I want you to kind of up the minimum and make it so you're investing a minimum of 15% of what you make. Once you get the hang of that, then up it up 20%, maybe 25%, depending on what you're making. The more you can invest, the faster you can build that wealth. And the faster you can build this wealth, the more assets and income that you'll have. That way you can live the life you want without worrying about the price because you got your assets producing income, which can fund and buy you whatever it is you want. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on investing that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our free finance and business newsletter. And as always, keep hustling. But in the long run, what really affects the stock's price is its fundamentals. That's how much money is the company making? How are their profits looking? Are their revenues growing? Are their profits growing? How is the management and are they innovating for the future? So these are the things that really affect a company's stock price over the long term.